guys. It's been a while. Um, I'm sorry I didn't update you guys sooner. I just really haven't felt up to it. Um, I was debating yesterday because I was feeling really, really, really bad to uh, take out the camera and shoot a video, but there was just too much going on yesterday, so first of all, I didn't even have time. And like I said, I barely got out of bed. I didn't do my hair, I didn't do my makeup, and I was like, no. As much as I want to, like, share my thoughts and the process of all of this, I just, there's just certain days where you just can't pick up a camera and talk about everything, especially if you're, like, ready to cry every time you even think about it. So I took some convincing today, um, but when I got up this morning, I guess, like, I took a shower and I was like, no, I... One day I'll look back at this and remember all the heartache that um, I went through and it'll all be worth it, but I, I know that I have to share some some part of it even if it's not exactly in that moment, but I'd like to kind of keep track of how I'm feeling too and um, let you guys know and I'm sure most of you guys have these days too where you just don't know why you're doing all of this and why why you're like struggling so hard I guess um I'll show you guys my chart in, in a minute I guess because I have you guys on the tripod so I'll take the camera down in a minute and I'll show you my temperature chart it's it's like really 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 hard to explain as to why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling even though I know that most of you guys that have been struggling for so long probably know like how I'm feeling and what I'm going through it's just it seems to be really hard to be able to put that like actually into words and like actually tell you how I'm feeling okay so obviously on Saturday I was all happy because I got my positive OPK Saturday afternoon I was a little bit bummed out because I thought it might have been a false positive because it went away so fast and that I missed the surge. Then Saturday, everything was going on with the whole baby thing um, of Matt's little brother. So we never BD'd, which made me stress out because now I felt like we missed our surge um, and our ovulation chance um, just because of them. So that was day one of being upset. Um, then Sunday morning, I woke up and I took another test. And it was really, really light, which made me want to check back on the other ones. And like I said, they were super dark. Um, well, not like completely positive, definitely not, but really close to a positive. So I think I checked too soon on them because the digital tests work a little bit faster. So, yeah. Which made me like be positive about everything. And I was like, okay, so my surge was Saturday, which means I'll probably ovulate Sunday, Monday, maybe Tuesday. So, um, I had lots of cramping that made me think that something is definitely going on and I was so happy that the Femera seemed to be working for me and, um, yeah, it was just like, I, every time I had cramps, I was like, oh my gosh, like something must be going on and, um, I was just excited about all of that and, um, yeah, I was really, really hoping because my temperatures, okay, last time I took my temperatures when I actually caught ovulation, I had a more of a regular sleeping pattern, like, I, I don't know, I, 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 I'm gonna try to like, go from way at the beginning. For me, my temperatures are, like, they're the ones that confirm ovulation for me, just because of PCOS, obviously you know that you can get false positives and OPKs, but, um, I think I've only ever had two false positive OPKs, which obviously made me want to start temping um, at least like normal cycles when I knew something could happen. I wasn't going to temp like a hundred and something day cycle because I knew nothing was going to happen anyway. So um, I'm just starting to get back into the whole temping every day and getting back into it. And temps really, like they don't freak me out, but they... They kind of do. I can't really temp in the middle of the night because I don't know when I'm going to bed. I don't know when I'm going to have to get up to go to the bathroom. Like, I have no way of saying, okay, between this time and this time, I know I'm going to be sleeping, let's say, three hours, like, solid hours, and I can temp every day. 
So for me, it's a matter of, I know Matt leaves at 4, sometimes I'll fall asleep right at 4, sometimes I don't fall asleep until 5, and then it depends on how long I sleep, like 6, 6.30, 7. So, I think that's a, that's, that, it's one of the things that I'm like trying to pull myself up on as to why my temperatures seem to be all over the place, and like I said, I'll try to insert my chart in here somewhere so that you guys can actually see what I mean. Um, so my temperature had like, it's been literally like up, down, up, down, up, down. Well, not really. I haven't done it that long, but it started off, then it went low, then it went a little bit up, up, and then low, low. Up. All right, you guys. So this is the page that I'm on. I hope you guys can see this. My camera kind of sucks that way. Okay, so I'm going to go on BBT chart. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Oh, of course it won't focus. Come on. This might work, I guess. I don't know, I'll just read it to you guys anyway. Okay, so... I gotta... Okay, so... Obviously this is all of our BB dancing. Ah! Well, I guess that works too. No, I don't like that one. Sorry guys. <laughs> touch screen still getting used to it okay anyway so then these are like my OPKs so that was the one that turned positive on the Saturday then it was negative the next day I didn't test yesterday or when was this on Monday I didn't test Tuesday I tested today I didn't test either because I'm just over it <laughs> and um so I guess this is obviously when my chart thinks that I ovulated due to my OPK, like it says right here, cycle day 13 is when I got my OPK, um, no, cycle day 12 is when I got my OPK, so they figure I did ovulate on cycle day 13, which, due to the cramping, honestly, if it happened, I don't think it happened until the Tuesday, which is right here, like here, I think. And what's going on? Oh yeah. Well, okay. So I think it happened either Monday or Tuesday. Sorry guys, I was trying to like figure out what was going on here. So anyway, this is what my like actual temperature looks like. And to me it literally looks like okay, it went down and then up and up. And if you look at here it went down and then up and up. Like, see how it's doing like the same thing? Not the exact temperature, but it almost looks the same with that little swerve right here. And then a little swerve right here. So, I don't know. This morning I forced myself to sleep longer, which put my temperature to here. So I'm hoping that it'll continue to go up, I guess. If it goes back down, even though I'm trying to sleep hard, then obviously nothing happened and my cycle's a bust. But if it should keep going up, then it might have just been me messing up in here, not sleeping properly, getting the proper temperature. But you guys let me know what you think about this, and I don't know. Just because it's so all over the place, I don't know if I did ovulate or not. I'll try to... Oh, yeah, did you guys ever see these? I thought they are funny. It says, How do you want your eggs? Fertilized. <laughs> and then, Hey girl, you just uh, lie in bed with your hips elevated. I'll mark down our beading on your fertility friend chart. Well, damn. <laughs> and I thought that one was kind of cute. Invisible positive pregnancy test. Don't we've all seen that one? And I love this one. Infertility. When you want to slap the shit out of the next person who says, Oh, it'll happen. Just relax. Yeah. I'm sure it will. <laughs> okay, so this one was the last cycle. And, like, my temps were doing the same thing. Like I said, I never sleep properly, so that's what was going on there. So I just gave up because I think I got sick during that time, too. I was, 
I think so. So I just gave up on that, but I did get a positive OBK, but obviously that didn't go anywhere because um, my whole cycle lasted forever. Um, and then this one was that one that was huge <laughs> because I literally, this is how long everything is and you can like slide it over. Um, <laughs> so that was a what, um, a 104 day cycle. 103 day, I guess. Crazy, hey? Anyway, so that was the one time that my chart actually looked decent. And that's the one time that I know that I ovulated. Crazy, huh? Like, that looks so nice. <laughs> and even though my temperatures went up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, they never went as crazy as they are right now. Even though, like, this gap was pretty big, too. And it just looks bigger in my other one right now because I didn't go up yet. But I would wish if I was here right now, now it would spike up. But I doubt it'll happen. I really doubt it because my cramping's gone. So my temperature should have went up. Sorry, my legs are itchy. <laughs> um, my temperature should have went up like way yesterday, probably, because like I said, I'm not feeling much of ovulation today. So I don't know. I'm trying to pull myself up on the fact that I haven't had a solid sleep just because of everything going on lately. I'm just stressed out to the max like there is nothing in life right now that has me excited. I don't know if the Femera is working. I don't know if I'm, if I'm in my two week wait. I don't know. Um, like yesterday for example Matt came home at like before lunch because it snowed after having like 30 degrees out last week. Um, so his work shut down, which is making us worried now that they're going to be shutting down every time like it snows or rains or whatever, so him losing more money. His weekend job just shut down, so he needs to look for a new weekend job. Um, we're trying to get a loan for a uh, vacation to like actually go somewhere so that we can both relax because we're so stressed out lately. And um, everything looked great until she figured out that he, she, uh, Matt just started his new job, meaning he's on probation, meaning she can't do anything until he's off probation, which won't be for three months. Now that we don't know if his job's actually secure there either, he might be looking for a new job again, so it's just a mess right now, like literally everything. And then this morning I was like, okay, so my temperature went up a little bit. If it keeps going up, at least that could mean that I actually did ovulate. Um, so I was trying to pull myself up. I was like, okay, I'll do the video today. I'll talk about it. It'll help me to like talk things out and get your guys' opinion. And yeah. Um, and then I went to shower. I got ready. I did my makeup. And then I wanted to do my hair. And then my straightener cropped out. So, and I obviously don't have the funds to go buy. Like, and like my straightener has lasted me like five years for like every day. Sometimes like twice a day if I like had to go somewhere at night or something like it's been a great straightener But obviously you just have to crap out this week when everything's already adding up. It's just things like that that are getting to me lately and Like I told you guys before just the fact that I'm like sitting at home and have nothing to do That's like just adding on top of it all. I'm just so I have nothing to do But sit here all day obviously take care of the house take care of my animals <laughs> As I say that baby's like stretching on the floor. <laughs> um, but you just have too much time to think, if that makes any sense. Like you just sit here and you overthink everything. So then when you have a plan of what could make you happy if, if this were to happen, then and then something goes wrong, it just messes with everything. But then if you sit here and don't try to think about anything, it doesn't work like you're trying to find something that you can keep yourself busy with and I don't know it's not like I expected to get pregnant right away I told you guys from the beginning I know this is gonna take a few tries but I was hoping that at least the Femera would work for us and it seemed to have worked for us like by the OPKs and by all my cramping that I had the last couple days it did really seem like I don't usually get cramps mid cycles and especially not like that like they were weird like twinges and pulling and sometimes it'd be like a sharp pain all of a sudden that would last for like five seconds and go away 
And most of the cramps were on the left side too, which would make me think that I, if I ovulated, it would be on the left side. Um, but today I hadn't really felt anything. Yesterday I did a little bit, but it started going back. Anyway, so all that made me believe that I would have ovulated, but my temperatures aren't confirming it, and if they aren't confirming it, that means I didn't. And I'm trying to hold on to that little bit of a hope, <laughs> again, that, like I said, I don't sleep properly, like I don't have a proper three hour no waking up and then take my temperature sort of thing so I'm hoping that that's just what it is that I couldn't like temp properly and that I did actually ovulate but I don't know now I like have to sit here and literally wait because I don't know when I actually ovulated due to all the pain like I don't know if it actually happened the day of the day that my chart like that um, one of my charts says that I ovulated or if it just happened yesterday, like, I don't know. And according to, like, my first and only time I ovulated, I think I had about a 13 or 14 day, uh, lupo phase or whatever that's called. Um, so, I don't know. I'm just going by saying, like, it would happen on Tuesday because that's when I had the most cramping and then Wednesday they started going, like, backwards, like, getting less. So... I'm going by Tuesday, which would mean like two weeks from then would be AF if I ovulated. Um, I have that little sheet out in the kitchen that I looked at again yesterday as to what my doctor had said about everything and I just scheduled my blood work for next Friday. Um, I did check what the sheet said too and it said like to check for the progesterone and then my HCG levels. Scheduled for cycle 824 which is next Friday on the 15th, I believe. And then it said on the sheet that on cycle day, if I get my period, great, uh, everything worked, but obviously didn't get pregnant. If nothing happens on cycle day 35, she wants me to take a pregnancy test. If it's positive, obviously, yay, you're pregnant. And if not, then start the progesterone all over again and then double the femera. Um, it's just such a long waiting process. Like, this first month has been so hard on me just because I don't know what to expect, you know what I mean? Like, most girls know, okay, my cycles are usually, say, like, 35 days long and I usually, if I ovulated somewhere in the 20s and they know their dates. As of right now, I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know if I actually ovulated. I don't know if the Femera worked. I don't know if I'm gonna, like, when I ovulated, if I'm gonna, gonna get my period and how long it's gonna take to get it. I'm just literally sitting here not knowing anything about myself and that's what's hurting me the most I think. Um, I was talking to Matt yesterday and I was like, I was such a Debbie Downer yesterday, like I, I didn't want to come out of bed, I just, oh, and anyway what I told him was like it just sucks because it hit me yesterday that like I'm supposed to be this woman that can get pregnant and give birth like that's kind of what we were put on this earth for not that I'm saying like babies are everything you're supposed to have a career and stuff too but to me especially right now when I want it it just feels like I'm failing as what I'm supposed to be like I can't get pregnant I don't even know if I'm gonna be if I get pregnant like I'm not knock on wood <laughs> trying to jinx anything but like I said we're at a higher risk of miscarriages too right so even if i do get pregnant i don't know if it's going to be a chemical pregnancy if i'm going to lose a baby at six weeks nine weeks 15 weeks or 39 weeks like it could happen at any time and the fact that i'm like failing so badly at this even though like i'm taking medicine that is literally kicking my butt um and it's still not working or I'm trying to stay optimistic and I'm trying really hard today to tell myself that I could have still ovulated and that the temperatures could have just been messed up because I'm not sleeping properly, hence why I'm not temping properly and that's just why this is happening and that I actually did ovulate and my period is going to come and if it doesn't come then I am pregnant <laughs> but I don't know, it's just the, the whole thing of if I knew I ovulated and I knew I would be getting my period in two weeks, I wouldn't be so upset about everything because I knew that something worked and I can try again soon. If this doesn't work, I'm looking at 
a 35 day cycle to find out whether or not it worked in the first place. On cycle day 35, I had to take 10 days of progesterone again, wait 6 days for my period to, to start, so I'm going to start counting cycle day 1. So that's like almost 3 weeks just sitting around taking medication again until cycle day 1. Then I need to like take 5 days of the Femera again, double the dosage, and die every day of a headache again. Not die, I'm like overreacting I guess a little bit. But, um, like it, li it did really kick my butt. Like it even took a couple of days just to get my head back. And it's been a breeze not having headaches every day. But I know that this is, if this is what I have to do, I'm obviously going to do it because I want my baby. But it just sucks because like, just the excitement of that positive OPK and the cramping really did make me believe that okay this was it like my body's starting to work the way it was supposed to like it might not sound stupid but it made me feel more of a woman because it seemed that my body was finally doing what it was supposed to so now that it looks like it didn't it's just it like it pulls you down so much and it really hurts it really does so all this waiting is the biggest part that sucks it's not the pills, it's not the headaches, it's not the nausea, the dizziness, the peeing on a stick every day. It's none of that is really that horrible that you can't take it. None of the blood work is, none of the tests are, but the waiting sucks so bad. The not knowing and just sitting here literally like in the spot all day and just overthinking everything and just waiting. Waiting for something to happen, whether it's AF whether it's a positive pregnancy test, whether it's starting the new medication, it is just waiting. <laughs> and that's hard. It really, really is hard. It's hard on your mind. It's hard on your body. It's just hard on yourself because you're just overthinking everything. And I don't know. I know that lots of you guys are going through the same stuff and I don't want to seem like I'm acting like I'm the poorest girl out there. I'm not. I'm definitely not because I know that many of you ladies have gone through all of the Femera or Clomid or whatever it may be for so long already and this is my first month. But um, in, on the other hand, this is our 19th month of trying to get pregnant and we're still not that much further than we were when we started out. Like, it's not that my cycles are regulated yet, it's not that my body's working yet, like, it's just, <laughs> when you waited so long for something to happen and you prayed so hard that the Femera will work and then it doesn't, that's what sucks. That, like, it really sucks. So, yeah. I don't know when I'm going to update you guys. <laughs> Um, I don't want to keep ranting on to you guys either because I know that's going to get boring just hearing me talk about how bored I am and how crazy I'm going because I know all of you guys are cra going crazy too. It's not just me. But sometimes it just feels good to talk about it and um, pretend I guess that you guys are all sitting here with me and I can just talk about it and somebody knows what I'm talking about. So, um... I don't know, I'll update you guys whenever I guess, whenever there's something new, whether my temperature actually goes up and stays up, if I can actually sleep properly now, or I don't know. I guess the latest would be like next week Friday, but I don't want to wait that long to update you guys on something, even if it's just like a quick 5 minute high video. Let me know what you guys think about all of this, and I hope you're not too upset with me. <laughs> It's just, I'm trying to share my feelings, and I think that's kind of a part of the process with all this. This is the true face of infertility, and many of us are struggling with it, and me especially with the last couple of days. So, we'll see. I have my fingers crossed. I'm not trying to give up. I know that one day our day will come, and we'll get that BFP, and we'll stay pregnant for nine healthy and happy months and then we'll all hold our bundle of joy and look back at this and just appreciate our little baby so much more 
but until then we just have to kind of keep like sticking together and help each other out I think and just be there for each other. I can say that after talking about this and I'm sure after editing it and posting it um, it'll help me a lot out to know that somebody knows what I'm going through and even if just somebody says something sweet that'll already make my day. Thank you guys for listening and thank you for staying with this video until the very end. <laughs> I love you guys and I appreciate you guys for always checking in with me and giving me your opinion. I don't know what I'm gonna do without you and um, I hope you keep following my journey as I'm following your guys's, and I don't know. I'm hoping one of you guys will finally get your BFP so that I have something that takes my mind off of things. <laughs> so no pressure, but somebody out there get your BFP. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys really soon. Bye guys.